You're listening to Backstage Leadership Conversations, brought to you by the Digital Tourism Think Tank, in collaboration with Abu Dhabi's Department of Culture and Tourism. I'm Nick Hall, and I'll be your host for the series. So join me as I take a global view on the exciting trends and developments happening in the MICE sector, with a multitude of truly insightful leadership conversations from truly global perspectives, all recorded right here in Abu Dhabi. Throughout the series, we'll be discussing sustainability, events for impact, horizon technologies, and considering the implications for business events and the wider sector. So if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, be sure to do so now, wherever you get your podcasts. In today's episode, I'm thrilled to bring you an enlightening discussion with James Taylor, a keynote speaker specializing in creativity, innovation, and future trends. And indeed, James was also the keynote speaker from the Abu Dhabi Business Events Forum. So he'll be sharing some fascinating insights about the future of events in the Middle East and, of course, Abu Dhabi. We're also going to dive into some of those topics that he touches on in his inspiring keynote talks, such as creativity, curiosity, collaboration, and how these are key components to accelerating innovation within the events sector. He'll be talking about how technologies such as AI and machine learning are shaping the future of events and considering how they might make those more productive and creative. We're also going to explore the concept of regenerative events and how sustainability is becoming a crucial element for event planners. So let's jump straight in to learn more about the opportunities for the events industry, especially in the context of Abu Dhabi's rapidly evolving events landscape. My name is James Taylor. I'm a keynote speaker on creativity, innovation and future trends. I've been speaking here uh, today at the uh, Abu Dhabi Business Events Forum. It's been fantastic. Lots of great conversations about the future of events here in the Middle East. So tell me a bit about uh, some of the topics that you covered. And partic- in particular, how do you translate those kind of global trends that you explore as an expert in that field to the tourism industry and the opportunities there? Well, so today I was talking about how we can use creativity, curiosity, and collaboration to accelerate innovation, in this case, in in business events. And I I come from this industry. Originally, I used to work in live events. So this is very familiar to me, and it's nice nice being around people from this industry again as well. So really what I was talking about, I guess, quite a bit today was the augmentation of those people that work in events with things like artificial intelligence, machine learning. Because... So a lot of people are very frightened of some of these technologies. Will it take my job? Is it going to replace me? Um, but really, the way to think about it is this is going to augment us. It's going to allow us to do greater things, more productive things, hopefully more creative things than we could have done previously if it was just us humans working on our own. So that's what we were kind of covering today. And we were covering everything from the idea of digital twins, for example. We were talking about generative AI and how that's, that can help uh, people in the marketing and the sales of their events as well. And uh, yeah, it was good. We, it was a ni- nice conversation that was going on today. And what would you say are some of the key learnings that the industry here uh, needs to take on board? I know you talked a lot about circularity, not only in process, but also in how we gather and how we share ideas. Well, one of the things I love about this part of the world and why I choose to to live uh, here in the UAE is because it always feels to me like I'm stepping into the future. Uh, Things that happen here are going to happen in other parts of the world in a year's time. So I think we can use that when it comes to events and to be just a little bit ahead of perhaps other things that are going on in the industry. So, for example, this year we have COP28 happening and we're going to be talking a lot about sustainability. So as that relates to this industry, how can we use innovation to make our events more sustainable? I mentioned today a stat a three-day person, a three-day 1,000-person event uses 433 barrels of oil. Well, that's something that we can do something about. We can make our events more sustainable, more efficient in, in how they work, but that's going to require that we get creative. So I was kind of talking a little bit about that, this idea of sustainability, actually talking about regenerative events, which is going to go in the next level. And I believe there's going to be other speakers here talking about that a little bit further. So would you say that uh, as a society, as an industry, we need to start thinking about how we ourselves can create that regeneration that can actually create a positive impact through our actions? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think 
What's very interesting is, I, because in my job, I get to speak to all these different industries and I see where they're all at on their journey on ESG or sustain, and sustainability. And what is very interesting is the industry that's probably the most advanced in this area is an industry that this part of the world knows very well. It's oil and gas and energy. Because they've been thinking about ESG and sustainability for a long time because they have to measure these things in terms of outcomes. So really what's happening is I think the, the events industry, the meetings, conferences industry can learn a lot from other industries. The, the, traditionally, the, the events industry is, is a little bit further behind. It's more like the, the, the entertainment industry in thinking about this. But it's coming fast. It's coming fast. And so the opportunity that I think here is that we can really embrace this change that we're going through as a society, as a world, and, and just do things a little bit more creatively, a bit more in an innovative way. But what was very nice, because in addition to the keynote, I was also hosting uh, and moderating some panels, and we had people here from uh, different organizations across the Middle East. And one of the nice things that we were all talking about was how can we collaborate together to bring more meetings, conferences, incentives, and events to the region? So those, those of, we're winning business from Asia, from uh, Europe, from North America, for example. So this is this lovely balance of we have to be competitive because every country is doing its own thing. Every city is doing its own thing. But there's also times that we can collaborate and actually that can is good for the good of all. So what would you say sums up the unique proposition that Abu Dhabi can frame itself when it thinks about the mice sector and how it can really be competitive in the years to come. So we were hearing about a couple of things today. I, I, I thought we had an interesting discussion about emiratization and the opportunity there is to uh, attract and retain uh, Emiratis to do, do this. So I think there's a, it, I, I think this kind of goes back to a changing trend I'm, a ch trend I'm seeing within the industry where the younger generation now that are going to events, they want greater authenticity in their events. They don't want to just be going to something, traditional three-day conference with a, maybe a big dinner or awards thing on the Saturday night, for example. They just want something different. And this is an opportunity that we can add some authenticity here. And I think that's something Abu Dhabi could do particularly well in terms of the experience here, the, the, the food, the culinary cult, you know, culture that we have here as well. If we can take some of that and put it in so people go, we're going to go back there because it's a unique, authentic experience. I think that's a, that's a big opportunity. So I think that that's one side of the opportunity. And the other side is because this part, this, uh, the UAE is, is hosting uh, COP28 this year. I think there's a huge opportunity for this, this Abu Dhabi to really lead the charge in what does it mean to create a sustainable event today? How do we measure that? Uh, how does that event not just is not just good for the three days that it's happening, but how it le leaves a greater legacy as well? James, thank you very much for sharing your insights with us today. My pleasure. What a fascinating interview there with James Taylor, where his insights into the world of creativity, innovation, and future trends were nothing short of enlightening and a reminder that this is something we all need to keep in mind when we think about the future of our industry. We delved into how events in the Middle East have a real opportunity right now to leapfrog their global competitors, embracing horizon technologies and new developments in fields like AI and digital twins, ensuring that technology augments rather than replaces jobs, and we see the opportunity rather than the disruption that these new technologies inevitably will bring. We also had the chance to explore sustainability, and James mentioned that a three-day event with a thousand people attending will use an astounding 433 barrels of oil. Well, that was certainly a shock to me. By focusing on more sustainable or regenerative events, we can have a significant impact. And it's clearly our duty as an industry to move in that direction and to do that fast. Another highlight was the importance of capturing the authentic essence of the destination. In Abu Dhabi's case, there are so many opportunities to do this from the culinary delights to the cultural elements, which are such a core part of the destination experience. And it's important that we build these into the events proposition, but also into the proposition of the destination as a whole. This is, after all, what sits at the heart of our competitive positioning. And finally, with COP28 very much in the air, 
it has created a huge opportunity for Abu Dhabi to lead by example in creating sustainable events that not only impress, but also have a lasting legacy. And we should always think about the legacy we can create with our event sector. You've been listening to Backstage Leadership Conversations. Be sure to hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future episodes. If you're enjoying the series, why not take a moment to leave a review or get in touch and let us know what you think. Discover more industry insights by heading over to our website, thinkdigital.travel, where you'll find lots more interviews, podcasts, case studies, and industry research, all at the click of a button. Thanks to the Abu Dhabi Department of Culture and Tourism for making this possible, and thank you for joining us today.